The Core P90TG from Thermaltake features a unique prism-shaped open-air design so you can ogle your parts from any angle. The 5mm tempered glass keeps things classy, and the three-chamber design supports a full complement of hardware even if you're custom water cooling. For more on the Core P90TG, click the sponsor link in the description. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. I am bringing back my monthly build series, which has been on hiatus for a couple months, but the basic premise is that I go over parts lists for computers to help you guys choose the best parts to build a PC with, since the first step of building a new computer is of course choosing which parts you want to build with. Now just to clarify, I am not gonna be actually assembling anything today, so check out my builds playlist linked in the description if you actually want to see me put a system together. And of course I do want your feedback for next month as well, so check the description for a straw poll question that you might be able to give me some help with. What builds do you want to see in June? I have a few options here, so check those out and let me know what you think. Now, I haven't forgotten the February straw poll, and actually uh, a couple of my builds are based on the uh, popular answers from this one, but I made the builds before I saw this was the number one response, the worst build, max price, minimum performance. So I'm not gonna do this today, but this might deserve its own video in and of itself, so vote for that for next month if you want to see a little bit more of it. For this month though, my idea was that I have two theoretical customers in my brain and one customer wants to play video games and maybe kick off a streaming uh, career on Twitch so you want to be able to game and stream at the same time maybe do some video editing as well but budget is definitely a concern and for that I have a $900 level build there's a second customer who's more focused on gaming who has a little bit more money to spare and for that we're gonna go with an Intel platform and that's more of a $1,300 build and of course all these builds and their parts are linked in the video's description if you want to check them out I'm using PC Part Picker as usual to go over these parts lists, so let's start with that $900 AMD well-rounded gaming PC, and for this I'm using the 2600X, which is what I recommended the upgrade to with my entry-level build that I did last month. 2600X is a very powerful processor, 6 cores, 12 threads, and the reason I went with the X versus the, just the 2600 is, although it's $30 more expensive, you get a better cooler with it, the uh, Wraith Spire rather than the Wraith Stealth, and it is going to run at a higher frequency out of the box than the 2600, so if you're not comfortable with overclocking right now, then you can start Still run the CPU and you will get a little bit better performance out of it. Now beyond that I went with an X470 motherboard, uh, 16 gigs of memory, a 240 gig SSD, uh, graphics card, you do need a discrete graphics card with this processor and I'll get more into how I chose that when I get down to it. Uh, and then we got a case that's about 60 or 70 bucks and then a uh, 80 plus bronze rated 550 watt power supply. So this power supply should be able to handle a GPU upgrade in the future. I would uh, be satisfied with this power supply with anything up to like a GTX 1080. Of course if you're planning on doing a lot more additions to your system in the future maybe consider a slightly higher, higher wattage power supply. Uh, but let's get into the motherboard selection since we already know what our CPU is. Now X470 is a good way to go with this just because you know all X470 motherboards are going to be uh, updated and compatible with the Ryzen 2000 series processors. Uh, you can get a B350 or an X370 motherboard that will be compatible but might need a BIOS update and if you don't want to deal with that potential hassle there are X470 boards that are available. They're not even that expensive and they do typically tend to overclock if you're doing higher end overclocking a little bit better than those B series motherboards. For 140 bucks there's actually options from Gigabyte, Azure, and MSI. For 20 bucks more than that, you can go with the ASUS Tough. I compared the $340 boards and they're all very similar. So for instance, if you definitely need Wi-Fi, consider the ASRock because it includes uh, 802.11ac Wi-Fi. Beyond that, uh, specs are really similar between them, so uh, choose which one looks pretty. I want the MSI one for this build because uh, we're going with black and red aesthetic. Speaking of motherboards, once you've chosen your motherboard, whatever it happens to be, go to the motherboard manufacturer's website, go to the support page, and look at the QVL list qualified vendors list and you'll find memory that they have specifically tested. So for the X470 Gaming Plus, uh, you can actually see CPU compatibility, memory, and then you can see original Ryzen 1000 series CPUs. Uh, these are the APUs, and then you can look specifically at what they've tested with the 2000 series CPUs like 2600, 2600, and so on. Uh, there's tons of options here, and MSI has actually done a really good job with their memory validation. So I went down this list and I was just randomly choosing because I could not cross check all of these, but highlight the actual product name, search for it, see if you can find that exact 
memory kit for sale because then you'll know you can plug it in and it will be compatible. My choice was this ADATA kit. It's an XPG Gamix kit, 16 gigs, 2 by 8 gig, and uh, it's $162, which is still expensive for 16 gigs of memory, but since memory was more in the towards $200 range for a 16 gig kit recently, it's actually starting to come down a little bit. You get an added bonus that this memory is black and red, so it should match with the motherboard choice that I've gone with, as well as the case, and then of course DDR4 3000. Uh, it might run at 2933 or 3000 speed once you plug in uh, the XMP setting on your motherboard, but I would be satisfied with that. Now let's talk about video cards, and video cards of course really expensive and overpriced right now. If you've been watching my channel, you're probably familiar with that. But so what I did was looked at all the graphics cards that are available for sale right now, compared them to the MSRP, and found that you're still gonna be paying 40 to $100 extra on top of the MSRP to get a graphics card right now if you're buying new. That goes up if you're looking at something like a 1080 Ti or GTX 1080. But the slightly more reasonable priced uh, GPU option that I've found is the 1050 Ti. You should be able to get these for about $140 or $150 each. They're selling for $190 to $200 to $210-ish, but there are options and it's not that much more money. Since you need a discrete graphics card for this build, this is what I would recommend going with. It's perfectly adequate for 1080 gaming and probably a viable upgrade path in the future. Now, if you're looking at this build and you're like, yeah, this looks good. Uh, I want to do some streaming. Six cores and 12 threads is great for that. want to do maybe some video editing or some other heavy lifting with my computer. Solid build for that for 900 bucks. There is a secondary option here that you should check out. You're going to end up with slightly older hardware, but you will get a better graphics card. Uh, that is the AMD Con crate bundle. This is the only one that's available right now, but it's $550 and this gets you this gets you three of your main components for your system. It's a B350 Tomahawk AM4 motherboard from MSI. So it's a slightly older motherboard and it's not as high quality as the one from with my build. It's a Ryzen 5 1600 CPU. It's still six cores and 12 threads, just not quite as fast as the 2600X. And finally, you get an MSI Radeon RX 580 graphics card. And this is actually an eight gig version as well. These should sell for about $250, uh, so you're actually getting it close to MSRP if you calculate the price of all of these things. Again, you're just going to be dealing with slightly older hardware. So that's a secondary option. If you get this exact setup, it will slot in with all of the other parts I've chosen on this list, so you can be happy and move forward with that. Rounding out the list though, again, I've just chosen a 240 gig SSD, and you should be able to find that for 60 or 70 bucks right now. Uh, the 1050 Ti, of course. I chose the NZXT S340 black and red case. If you want to choose a different case, just make sure it's full-size ATX. This one uh, is a good case, I've worked with it, color scheme matches, but cases where you have a wide variety of choices, so pick one that you think looks good, just double check the reviews, and you just you want full size ATX, so it'll fit the hardware. Uh, finally, that power supply, 550 watt, the uh, CX series from 2017 has nice all black cabling too, so it looks pretty clean. And there you have it, a solid all around build for $900 and probably due for an upgrade once graphics card prices come down. Now for that second customer who's really focused on gaming, maybe not as much interest in video editing or streaming, I have a Intel build and I'm happy to do an Intel build because I feel like I've been doing lots of AMD builds. I want to share the love, but hey, I, I, I like the AM4 platform because of the upgrade path, but that's not to say that Z370 has no place. So this build is based on an 8600K, have to add an air cooler there because it doesn't come with a cooler, Z370 motherboard, also 16 gigs of memory, 240 gig SSD, a 1070 Ti, so that's the big upgrade here with this build is the graphics card, uh, roughly the same case and a 650 watt power supply, which was carried over from an older build because it's uh, 80 plus gold. So you're paying a little bit more for the power supply there. You could save a little bit of money by going with an 80 plus bronze option. But here's the CPU, it's only six cores. You don't get hyper threading, so you don't get uh, 12 threads and uh, it's a little bit more money and you don't get an air cooler. So this is why I've leaned towards the AMD CPU use, but if you test in uh, CPU limited situations, the 8600K should give you a little bit more performance out of your graphics cards, especially something like a 1070 Ti, than you would get out of the Ryzen platform. So that's why we're going with this here. For the motherboard, I got the ASUS Z370-A, only 150 bucks, 140 if you count the mail-in rebate card. Uh, a little bit of RGB accents going on there, and a solid all-around motherboard from ASUS. I think anyone who gets this board would be pretty happy with it. It's missing some bells and whistles, like a surface-mounted LED readout, or uh, I think it does have 
It's got a, a memo K and a power button mounted, so I, I do appreciate that. This is probably the area where AMD and Intel are kind of on the most equal footing. If you're looking for a solid mid-range $150-ish dollar motherboard, there are good choices on either side. Uh, for the memory kit, for a little bit less than I chose for that, uh, for our Ryzen build, I have a Team T-Force Delta II RGB series, same speed DDR4-3000, uh, and it's RGB, so... You know, RGB is fun. I was actually looking at kits and I don't really care about RGB with these types of builds because my focus is less on aesthetics and more on performance. But for roughly the same price, why not go with RGB? Um, this is going to be a pretty nice looking build uh, aesthetically and RGB accents are, are pretty nice. And you can control it if you want a single color or turn it off or that kind of thing too. Moving on to storage, and here is where I just wanted to show you that I'm using a parametric filter from PC Part Picker. Basically, I've chosen the capacity range. It'll give us about a 250 gig capacity SSD, sorted by lowest price. But I do recommend that you kind of reality check here um, the SSDs that are recommended, because whereas most SATA SSDs will get you kind of in the same ballpark of performance, there are some that are slightly better than others. And if it's a difference of five or 10 bucks, you might consider something that's a little bit more well-known or recognized, uh, the Crucial MX 500, for example, is a good option, but it's 75 bucks instead of 60. So there you go, guys. Those are all the parts I would choose right now for a just under $1,300-ish build, again, depending on whether or not you're counting mail-in rebate prices. I did want to quickly uh, go over the GPU prices right now. So here's the 1070 Ti, sorted by lowest price. I don't know what the MSRP is for the 1070 Ti because it came out after the GPU prices had gone up, um, but it should be less than 500. So it's still, I feel like a 50, $60 premium over its MSRP, but closer to the price you should actually be paying. And actually relatively close to the price you would pay for a 1080, at least if the 1080s were selling for retail. Uh, 1070s for their part are selling for close to 500 bucks. There is this gigabyte one listed right here for 470, but my feeling is if you're gonna be paying close to 500 for a 1070, might as well just claw your way up to a 1070 Ti. If anyone's wondering why I haven't been including AMD GPUs, uh, well, here's here's the Vega 56, supposedly the more affordable Vega. Uh, $635 is the cheapest. Um, still ridiculously overpriced, especially when you consider that you can get uh, a 1080 for that much, and the 1080 will outperform it. Uh, here's the RX 580. A four gig RX 580 is $315 at its cheapest. That should be 200. Uh, the eight gig RX 580 should be 250. So you're paying like a hundred dollars plus for a four gig 580 and you're paying maybe 75, 80, 90 dollars plus uh, for a eight gig 580. It's a good card. I would recommend it if the prices were reasonable. Uh, here's what 1080s are going for right now, $600. So that's about a hundred dollar premium over what you should be paying. And finally, here's probably my second most viable card if you're looking for some, something mid-range. GTX 1066 gig you can get for just under $300 still again paying 40 50 60 dollars extra beyond what you should for that so if you're looking for an upgrade from the 1050 Ti this is probably where I would point you of course this gets into the range of competition with the 580 8 gig so it, it's up to you make your make your choice there depending on what you're gonna do now this higher-end build is geared towards somebody who's focusing on PC gaming and the benefits and wonderful things about PC gaming so I definitely recommend pairing it with a 2560 by 1440 monitor preferably be, pre preferably one that supports G-Sync if you've got a NVIDIA graphics card FreeSync if you've got an AMD graphics card and I got a couple options here just I wanted to show you guys this one's about 500 bucks for a Dell 27 inch 2560 by 1440 G -Sync G-Sync panel. Uh, the G-Sync panels do cost more than FreeSync, so if you're considering that RX 580 and you're getting a monitor at the same time, definitely keep that in mind that you're gonna pay more for the G-Sync monitor. Here's also the uh, Asus RG Swift PG278QR 27 inch, uh, similar class to that one. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but you do get a few additional bonus features, and I believe this one actually has a bit better color depth as well. Now I actually have a third customer who I was thinking about this morning, and that customer is me. I am building a new computer and I am teasing. I'm teasing just a few of the parts I'm choosing so far. Uh, this computer is gonna be built in collaboration with Corsair and Asus. So you might notice I'm using a lot of their components, but I wanted to at least give you guys an idea of what I have in mind. Uh, the build is gonna be called Riptide. and see if you can figure out why. It is a Threadripper build, so the Threadripper 1950X, uh, 16 core processor with 32 threads. This was on sale for like 700 
50 or 720 bucks the other day. Pretty good deal for that much money. Uh, bear in mind there's incompatibilities in these parts lists. Uh, these aren't fully completed yet, so please don't try to build a system off of this. Like the uh, cooler is not compatible with Threadripper, and I'm, I gotta talk to Corsair about that. Um, but the H150i is their newest high-end uh, all-one liquid cooler. RTZ Zenith Extreme motherboard, uh, 128 gig memory kit. Oh my gosh, uh, some Corsair SSDs, including the MP500 NVMe one. And then we got a couple GTX 1080 Ti's as well as a 1600 watt Corsair power supply. This isn't even a completed parts list. Let me know if you can tell what's missing. And actually, that's not even the whole build. There's the second part of it right here. I'm including a free NAS build in here as well. Uh, based on some discussions I had with Wendell, I'm actually going to be going with an AMD APU in this one, the Ryzen 5 2400G. Going with this new ASUS motherboard, this is the RG Strix X470-i Gaming, so AM4 Mini ITX motherboard since it's a dual system build. Uh, and my goal here is for this to be a free NAS build, so I wanted a motherboard that was compatible with ECC memory. I'm hoping to slap a 32 gig kit in there, a 2 by 16 gig kit, but I need to double check compatibility and I'm working with ASUS on that. This kit has not been tested, but Kingston does have a 32 gig ECC DDR4 memory kit, only $440. Super reasonable. For storage, I got a Force LE SSD, um, just to give me a little bit more stability. You can run FreeNAS off of like a USB drive, but when I did that last year, um, the USB drive died and that kind of sucked. Uh, but for storage, mass storage, I got WD Red 8 terabyte drives. I haven't ordered these yet, so I gotta figure that out for sure. But for eight terabyte drives is 32 terabytes, which matches well with the 32 gigabytes. Uh, it's good to have about one gig of memory per terabyte of storage with FreeNAS. And finally, of course, there, SFX 80 plus gold rated modular power supply. So there's still some questions that need to be answered about that build, but it's gonna be pretty awesome, pretty epic, uh, and I'm looking forward to it, and hopefully we'll be getting started on that uh, in the next couple weeks. So that will be my build for the month of May, uh, and I will, of course, like I usually do, build that system and then test it and show you guys what happens and the performance and all that good stuff. So stay tuned for that, and if you have any questions or theories about the mysterious uh, things that I did not clarify for sure, then leave those in the comment section down below, because I like when you guys comment on my videos. I also like when you hit the like button or the thumbs up button, as it is also commonly known. So feel free to do that for me as well on the way out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we'll see you next time.